a whole lot of national problem that we have has to do with logistics and supply chain that we don't get right. The idea of setting up an ark in Africa came from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This um, also evolved from all the support they have been providing to so many African countries, um, particularly around immunization and the, their focus on maternal and child health. Nigeria is a priority country for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They came to Nigeria and they went to Private Sector Health Alliance, an organization set up uh, mostly by Alhaji Ali Kodangote and Jimovia, Dr. Mohamed Ali Pate, Ike Imukwede of Access Bank, had strong private sector infusion into the public health space. They decided to incubate this idea in Nigeria. We engaged ARC to help us in looking at the whole supply chain system and see where we can play that catalytic role to really move the needle. Um, our key concern then was one, vaccines are not reaching the uh, caregivers as at when needed. And second, private sector participation was literally non-existent. And three, uh, the governance system around supply chain is not coherent it's not consistent, it's not comprehensive, but we also felt uh, ARC has some unique skills that can really help us move that, and that's how we started engaging with them. We knew ARC to be associated with um, private sector resource management. Essentially, the, the public sector was very suspicious of the private sector, and the private sector was suspicious of the government sector. So, but we found that ARC was the one who could come in between to bring the private sector and the public together. The main purpose of ARC was to um, support the government, um, ministries of health, in strengthening their supply chain system and improving and increasing availability of commodities at the last mile. As national coordinator of uh, supply chain, I initiated the warehouse visibility project when we realized that we are paying so much attention to the public health products and their storage. We now realize that we needed to, to pay more attention to the state's central medical stores. So myself and the Honorable Minister of Health then, Professor Adewale, we agreed that we are going to work on the project. He made a formal request to ACK to come and support the ministry on that project. ARC has been of uh, immense blessings to the government of Nigeria because uh, they have offered a lot of technical support in the area of warehousing, in our strategic plan development, in our blueprint on warehousing and the last mile distribution. They've always been available to us. They also, you know, brokered the Nigerian breweries PLC, their supply chain uh, trainings all around warehousing operations and management. It started as something that the, the federal ministry wanted to see. In the words of the former Minister for Health, he said, I am so pained by the wastes I see. When I visited a warehouse in one of the states, I saw expired commodities and I felt so bad. And it was something that you see immediately that he would invest in. It's not something that somebody introduced to him. And from that journey that where they took that decision to invest in that, and they said, I want to see all the warehouses across Nigeria, those that are of farmer grade or not farmer grade. By the time that assessment was done by them, they decided we need to support states to begin the journey of warehouse upgrade. Several companies said, we will support you. So there was that co-investment from the private sector end. And from there, recently, the most significant change came that Global Fund has made warehouse upgrade their number one priority for Nigeria. Because of 
all the work that had been done, having it institutionalized within the Federal Ministry of Health, they said, for every state, in short, for the next three years, they are focusing on 12 states. We want them to run this model of warehouse upgrade. Today, we have this concept of sustainable warehousing. It took roots from, from that engagement. Sustainable warehousing is where you commercialize through DRF so that you raise money that will be used to fund supply chain activities. It was from the process of that that Lagos State was able to raise 107 million naira to upgrade their warehouse. ACP was very instrumental, right, in helping us to think through and design the readiness for states. They were able to, you know, pull together the private sector players, the pharmaceutical companies, um, on our behalf to, first of all, create that market where we could access commodities from. The big win for us is Yobe State when it comes to government funding because they actually approached us to say, we have our own money for our drug management agency. We just need ARC advisory support to help us to spend it well. ARC Nigeria, um, our first interaction with them um, through the drug management agency um, was when we needed to shape our agency and of course the supply chain management um, across the state. Um, we need to have a partner that will guide us to improve on our standards, our systems, you know, and then of course um, enable us to upgrade the system in such a way that it will reach international um, best practices. ACT seems to be the kind of platform that we need to actually shape and focus uh, government attention on those key supply chain issues, especially as regards health commodities in the country. So for me, in that regard, uh, ARC is doing a lot and uh, we actually recognize the kind of impact that ARC has been making and that is why Yobe State government decided to, to invite ARC to Yobe State uh, so that we would have the kind of uh, resilient supply chain system that we need. And then we also got the advantage of, you know, being linked to um, the pharma group so that way it became easy for us to actually gain access to the commodities that we needed. Um, of course, we also had linkage with, with organizations like Kaizen that are actually reputable in supply chain management. Yodma came on board in January 2020. So it's still a very, very new agency. Uh, however, what we are seeing in terms of the project is that Yodma came in and is going to fill the gap a lot of gaps in the state in terms of the supply of essential health commodities to all the facilities in Yobe State. We have been working with ARC, we are developing systems that would ensure sustainability of the supply of these commodities. We have developed guidelines and uh, currently we have signed MOUs with uh, the uh, private uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing groups and so it's a huge project really. The private sector partners are the group of PMG man, pharmaceutical group of manufacturers association of Nigeria and we have three of them that we entered into an MOU. So for them, I think we can say generally that we have had a lot of experience because the, the, the way they run their, uh, their businesses are quite different from the way government runs businesses. Uh, it was very encouraging, especially when I saw their warehousing, the storage condition for, 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 for raw materials. It was quite impressive. We have never had such in your state as a government. So when AK shared with us about the prospects from Yobe, opportunity for local farmer, and uh, the industry partnered with Yobe for more like a pilot, you know, scheme to see what it looks like, and we've been on it. And I can tell you, it's something that when we look back, we we'll say yes, we are glad that we're kidding. So the role ARC has played in brokering that. Uh, partnership between the private sector and government institution is really playing out in a win-win situation. The private sector gets a guarantee of stock, you know, and demand, while government gets cheaper prices, you know, and delivered on time that services can really be provided. What we did was to, to liaise with uh, ARC in terms of uh, 
brokering agreements with the private sector in terms of our provision of essential medicines for the program to take off and we have a warehouse project ongoing and uh, ARC supported in terms of that linking us with the private sector to look at how we can model our warehouses to be farmer grade. The system of Yodma is designed in a system that it is it will it will self-sustaining. Now bring a near perfect system that runs, make sure that the drug revolving fund system is sustainable. Because uh, before the Yodma, the advent of the Yodma, other processes has been on that eventually failed. So all those loopholes, Yodma has taken care of them and it too is a developing scenario because we are just you know rolling out from facilities to facilities. So in terms of pricing of commodities across board is the same price. So what you get in the state capital for the same product is what you get in the remotest of facilities in Yobe State. And we thought that is a, a huge, a huge improvement on what used to happen. Then secondly, we are looking at the quality of products that we have. Uh, engaging with PMG Man actually helped us to ensure that whatever we get is qualitative enough and at the cheapest rates. Initially, the issue of even availability for our patients, not only availability, but also the issue of accessibility is discouraging because a patient will come to a hospital and saying that maybe often the five or six drugs prescribed to him, he will only be able to get one or two drugs. That's discouraged the patient even from him to even buy the two drugs. He will say, after all, 60 or 70 percent of the required or, or my demand prescription is not there. It's better for me to go and find it somewhere else. So with the comment of this Yodma, you hardly see a patient with which a drug will be said is out of stock within the facility. You hardly. That's a motivation that people will go to the hospital, get what they want at a cheap price and genuine because the way the the Yodma is designed, they deal directly with the manufacturers. So the issue of fake and counterfeit drug will not even arise at all. I think the strongest and most significant change is the um, change that we have had in the business thinking that was infused into the system. Uh, but, but prior to this time, most of our health facilities, we don't have a standing uh, drug policy in our facilities. We practice what we call individualized drug revolving fund scheme in those facilities. It is only now that we are able to source drugs that can go around the state in every loop and corner of the state. When you get there, you will see Yodima drugs in those facilities. Before the Yodima come, no enough drops in this facility. Every first patient is come, I write, I describe drugs for him. You go and buy inside maybe chemists and so on. The women that come ANC before, there is no enough drugs that will give them to go, like folic acid, parcelate, and SP. This is the drug that we use inside the ANC unit. Inside the pharmacy now, we have a lot of drugs, essential drugs, like PCM, amoxicillin, amphiculus, altimeter injection, ACTs, zinc, ORS for under five children. But now in Yodima Kon, our fabric is very strong. The fashion is come plenty and everything is come clear. That means the lifespan of the patient will definitely be increased, which is which is the major goal of every healthcare professional or healthcare systems. So when I came, the doctor attended to me and their service here is, is good. They are trying their best to make sure that the health is improving and I got the drugs I came to collect for my son because I'm happy with their services. We are seeing an increased uptake of um, services, increased understanding of the system and then of course increased um, confidence generally um, across board. What I love about the Yobo experience is you can see that trust that have always been a burden was a little bit taking a blow. It wasn't a burden anymore because of the role the ARC played. The most interesting aspect of it is in my local palace, the words, when they say there is an alert. So when companies start sending mails and they said, thank you for payment, thank you for you know, living up to your promise. Uh, for me, that's the joy. But the mere 
availability of drugs and consumables in a health facility. A person goes to the facility, gets seen by the doctor, gets tested, and then a prescription is made. They go to the pharmacy, pick up their drugs, and it is high quality drugs without any out of stock. That gives confidence to the individual and then to the workers themselves. The Yodma project teaches us so many things. One, it teaches um, Nigeria how best to start addressing a, a supply chain challenge. It teaches Africa because there's opportunity for cross-learning. It teaches the global community how to invest in supply chain management. Why? Um, it was a challenge that was identified by the states themselves. And the fact that the state said, we have money to invest in this. We just need someone to advise us on how best to address this issue. And also we need access to private sector support. That way, it speaks of ownership, top to bottom. We provide them um, independent advice on their transformative um, supply chain initiatives. Today, ARC is, you know, one of the foremost um, actors in the public health space in Nigeria. Getting that close, tight relationship with the government for us to actively play our role as a top partner to them. The COE really seeks to support the country to rapidly develop capacity, especially around supply chain, both for people already in the system as well as, you know, folks who would come into the system in the near future. They midwife about $50,000 from the Queenie Foundation for us, uh, which we collaboratively work together to develop the curriculum I'm talking about now. And they've sent so many of us for conferences, for workshops, for program renewal. And as of today, they, they are the, the biggest funder of our program and it was on account of uh, the relationship with uh, ARC. As far as warehousing is concerned, talking about storage, distribution and last mile deliveries, building capacity of a warehouse staff helps to improve the storage of those commodities and it has actually helped within the country, especially at the Federal Central Medical Stores Oshodi where the, the Kazem model was uh, deployed. We've built, we've strengthened the capacity of key government officers that play critical roles in their various public health supply chain systems. ARC was instrumental in setting up or expanding the MicroMasters here in Nigeria, uh, the, the MIT MicroMasters. You have a host of Nigerians who have taken the course, you know, based on ARC's uh, support. We have introduced mentors um, from the private sector uh, that would provide an additional support in ensuring that the government um, are able to address the gaps in a private sector best practice-like manner. It was part of the reason why we created the expert pool in, in the sense that why not try and source for experts, for example, on sabbatical, in between jobs, um, on leave, or potentially have time on their hands and are willing to support longer term. ARC Nigeria must be set up to scale. The Yobe state's support and the way it has gone means that many states will come for that kind of support. And we must be able to provide that kind of service, the same quality, in the same manner. That means as an entity itself, we must be able to run, I call it BMW engine. So the next step for us is set up to scale and we're already working on, on that. The broader vision is to even move beyond donors to, to generate enough resources through our activities that can sustain the organization long term. What probably would matter is, you know, how they intend to scale. Well, I have no, I have no worries that they won't be able to deliver if they choose to. ARC is there to advise and support government and every state has been advised to approach ARC for whatever problem they have. That is the campaign from the National Supply Chain Leadership. Currently, we are working with the Nigerian government um, in developing their next five-year strategy for supply chain management. Those are the kind of things that, that Nigeria should have, a national strategy for supply chain management. They do that dirty work for you, and then you are able to run with it as either an organization or, or a government. And I think that, for me, is the, 
that's the selling point for, for us. They are intellectually based, they, they've done their homework, and they know how to achieve maximum impact with little resources. And they are very quiet. You see, when you have an efficient engine, it works noiselessly. That's what I found out about them. They are extremely very quiet, but they are very, very effective and very efficient. They understand, look, I've been in the academic, for somebody to come to me and say, look at the field, these are the gaps. And by the time I did some few observations and critical analysis, I found that they are perfectly right. That's why we are a resource center. What a government should know is, if I need a resource, I go to ARC, I get it. ARC is not the key issue here. It's the resource they are able to get. It's the private sector they get. It's the academic institution they are able to get. It's the training they access. That is the success of an ARC, that we just exist and they come, they access it. So we are like that silent, you know, engine.